Welcome everybody, I'm Judy Sedgman and I'm your host for Innate Health, Eliminating Stress, Creating Healthy Communities. I have three guests with me today and I'm very pleased to reintroduce uh, Rudy and Jenny Kennard from London who um, operate a wonderful uh, enterprise there called Three Principles Movies, but they also travel the world and uh, themselves are very uh, active trainers in the Three Principles. And joining them is Gina Wolf from Tampa, Florida. Uh, Gina's I've known for a number of years. I think I first met her in California. And she now works a lot with uh, businesses and, and has really sort of made it a subspecialty to get involved with uh, programs that chambers of commerce offer uh, for their business uh, development activities. So um, Gina, that's really not why we're all here because today we're gonna answer a question that I'm very frequently asked. Uh, we found since we started doing this series and since I've been talking a lot in the community that a lot of people say, well, I, you know, you guys are all uh, so enthusiastic and so happy about this and so optimistic, but you know, you couldn't have been this way your whole lives. And, you know, how did this happen to you? How did, uh, I was at a meeting the other day where somebody said to me, I would give anything to be able to be at this hour of the morning with a smile like yours and, and feel like the day's gonna go great because she said, I'm already worried and I'm still drinking my coffee. I'm already <laughs> worried about what's next. And so I thought, well, maybe it would be interesting for people for us to talk a little bit about um, how we got engaged in this understanding and what changed for us. Because one of the things that uh, Jenny and I were talking about this not long ago that we realized is for a lot of people, uh, once you change, it's really difficult to remember what you thought before or what you were like before or how the world looked before. And so often, you know, change happens, especially when it happens from the inside out as, as is our understanding of it. Uh, you're looking out through different eyes. It's almost like you got new glasses and all of a sudden you can see everything. And uh, so for, for a lot of people, it's hard to relate to because until it happens, and then once it happens, it looks so ordinary, it's hard to talk about. So we're gonna try to make it a little more accessible and real today. And, and uh, I'm gonna ask our guests to talk about how, how they encountered uh, even a desire to change and then what started to change for them. So we'll start with you, Gina. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I wasn't going about looking for change of any kind. I, yeah. was, I was just working for a small consulting firm that was using this to help companies. Uh -huh. And they was trying to help companies find a, a true and lasting sense of team. And mm -hmm. this was what they were bringing to the companies. And I was an observer of it and I went through internships to learn more and to understand yeah. more. And it's interesting as, as I was pondering the question that you said you were gonna ask, I'd say I started out seeing the impact of, of state of mind and performance and that was really obvious to me. Uh -huh. uh, how where my head was had everything to do with how well I did whatever it was that I wanted to do. Yeah. And I used that understanding to be very effective in what went on to be a straight commission sales career. Uh -huh. I'd say coming back to it years later and being around people who were teaching and, and taking another look, I could see what I wasn't seeing at the time. And there was a, a depth of understanding mm -hmm. that I was missing the first time around. Yeah. So that, it's interesting to me to see that with fresher eyes. Yeah. But what's interesting to me about what you said is that even a little bit helps. Huge. Yeah. And Huge. that's one of the things that I've noticed with people when they start to change, even though they might have miles to go, uh, and all of us do, it's a lifetime pursuit to understand things better and better, um, that even it's like turning a ship in the channel. You're starting 
a new direction. And even though you've only gone a little way, you know that it's a good way. And uh, so talk about uh, productivity. What did you see, for example, in yourself or others and that was uh, really noticeable? Well, I took what I learned and I thought I had never sold before. So I mm -hmm. thought if this is really true, then I'm only going to make cold calls and go out on appointments when my state of mind is good. Uh -huh. And I paid attention to my state of mind. Mm -hmm. And I might have actually done work that was that kind of work for maybe 20 hours of the week. And the rest of the time I did things that I needed to do. Maybe it was paperwork, sales reports. Yeah looking up the addresses and the names of the people at the contacts, but I didn't pick up the phone and I didn't talk to anybody unless I knew I was in a good state of mind. Yeah. And I was the newcomer of the year for the company. Wow. And to me, that's what I credit yeah. with that result, Yeah. was that I was very mindful of if my state of mind is off, no matter how important it seems to, gee, I really need to make six more phone calls. Yeah. Well, not if my state of mind isn't right. Right. It would be much better to not burn those leads. That's so. a great point because I know when I started out, um, I used to have meetings with my clients because it was time to have the meeting, not it, regardless of how stressed or sad or upset or angry or whatever people state was. You know that wasn't the point. Point was it's two o'clock on Tuesday. We're supposed to have this meeting, and that's the first thing that changed for me as I realized I am not going to meet with people in a low state of mind. The second thing I realized is I can meet with them, but I'm not gonna talk about anything important until we all shift, because that was my second level of realization was that it's only one thought. You know, it takes only one thought to go from one state of mind to another, and that if you create a warm and beautiful feeling with other people and you're really listening to them, they quickly drop their whatever is upsetting them and their thinking comes right back into the moment. But that is, that is if, if, noth if business learn nothing else except tone matters, state of mind matters, we would live in a different world, I think. And you know what's interesting about that, the one other thing I want to add is you can almost use it as a time management tool. Yeah. Where you do the things that you know you can do well, even if your state of mind is off. Yeah. Like for me, that's paperwork. Filing. Yeah, filing <laughs> yeah. paperwork. There are certain yeah. things that I need to do for my work that I can do regardless of my state of mind. And if I have a to do list, the tendency is to do the things in the order that they're due or the in order of importance. Right. I don't use that order. I use yeah. the order of where's my state of mind and do the things that I can do in that state of mind. Yeah. And what I find is everything gets done. Yeah. And if I start out in a low mood, but then I start accomplishing some of those things because yeah. I just can't handle the big ones, my state of mind Shifts rises right by yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. So Jenny, what about you? I guess for me, it was, it was much more like a personal level that I, I started to understand this. And after the first three day training, I really understood that I had health. I had innate health, which I really didn't know before yeah and it just opened up this world of possibilities because I'd lived in this this shyness and uncomfortableness and even just going in the car with someone I didn't know very well would be such an excruciatingly uncomfortable experience for me huh. and now I love to meet new people I love to talk to people and it's just Everything that we've been doing with this trip is, I look back and I think, wow, that, wouldn't have, that didn't seem possible to me before understanding this. So I really saw that I had, I had health and I had the ability to think again and think again, which I didn't know before. I thought I was stuck with the thinking I had. So it's changed my relationships, it's changed my friendships, it's, mm -hmm. it's taken me on this journey of, of the Three Principles movies. And really it's just, it showed me that, you know, there's, there's life to, to be lived. And I think before I was almost kind of watching life and trying to organize it in my head to feel right. Yeah. Whereas now I kind of navigate life and I have ups and downs and, and that's okay, it's okay. And the mood passes, I'm never stuck. Yeah. So it's been just so freeing and, um, you know, and then I've gone on and I've been able to share it with my family and, yeah. you know, a lot, of, a lot of my family now involved in this work. Mm -hmm. Was it your change that inspired your family? Yeah. Wow. I think I went from being 
completely closed off to life to just kind of embracing life and it has been a journey yeah you know even after that first course I don't think I'd have been sat here with you yeah. with, with TV cameras and things but it was I saw that there was possibility and there was hope mm -hmm. and I think seeing that there was hope for myself I really saw that for everyone else in any circumstance mm -hmm. that this has the ability to to really change lives in in whichever way needs to be cha you know yeah. in whichever way yeah and Rudy what how did you get what what did you see first and how did it start to change for you well I guess um at the time I came across it I was an expert in mine technologies um, I, I spent I probably could have bought a house the amount of money I invested in courses and <laughs> workshops and qualifications and, and different things and um, I guess when I came across this it was so simple that I didn't see it yeah to be honest I did the first course and to be completely honest I didn't get an awful lot out of the very first course because my mind was so busy and I thought I knew it and I related to everything that I knew and it didn't seem anything different. Yeah. But what happens, I had the honour of meeting um, the late uh, Sydney Banks and he looked at me and he could kind of tell that I was like, my head was sort of whizzing around at 100 miles an hour and just said, just go away, do the things you enjoy doing and don't worry about anything. So I kind of yeah. went away and I relaxed and when I relaxed, it's what Gina was talking about, my, my state of mind lifted and I started to see what the course was about. I started to see the potential. Yeah. And I guess, f so from a professional level, I kind of, not immediately, it took me a little while, but I stopped doing what I was doing with, with clients and the courses I was giving to embrace this, this way. Mm -hmm. But on a personal level, I was very competitive, very ego orientated, meaning, I wanted to be the best at everything. I wanted to be the person in the group who said the most brilliant thing. I, you know, it's all about me all the time. Uh-huh. And, and I um, would never guess that now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and what I think, that just started to flow away. And my interest went from focusing on myself and my ego and my personality to being more interested and embracing the health, the, the spirit, the, the well-being, the the wisdom, the insight within myself, which yes. isn't in my personality, wasn't in my intellect, it wasn't in Rudy, it was within the source behind all of that, the animating yeah. force behind that. Yeah. Um, and I think when that started to kind of shine through more, I got less interested in Rudy, the personality, and I allowed that inner guidance, that cloud of mind, that, that whatever you want to call it, everyone's going to have a different name for that, to kind of guide my actions more and allow it to talk through me rather than me coming up with something in my mind to say. And you know what the difference in feeling is? Yeah. The, the, the difference in feeling is, it's, it's the difference between trying to swim on the ocean to actually just sitting on top of a surfboard and just <laughs> gliding it. Yeah. It made life so much easier. And um, I think when I first met Jen, I was kind of quite in, in the ego kind of a way. She used to really annoy you, didn't it? <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm out of it, because I don't know if anyone can completely get out of it, but I'm, yeah. I'm certainly more aware that I'm doing it. Yeah. And I can just drop it easier because of that understanding. Would, would you say that? Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, as we're in, a, we're in a relationship, it's been so useful for us to both kind of be on this journey and, and learning about it, because we take responsibility for our own feelings. And mm -hmm. I think I used to spend a lot of time blaming out there for how I felt yeah. and if someone was cross with me or snapped or, mm -hmm. you know, and now I can just, I can step back and it just seems, it's not something I try to do, but naturally now I take responsibility for how I feel and it's never about you and it's, it's just made our relationship flow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not that we, we get on brilliantly all of the time, but it just means that we give each other space to, for our yeah. health to come back up. Whereas before, you know, we try and kind of argue our way through. Even when you're feeling awful, you think that's the time to, to sort things out. And for us, it's been amazing because we just, we don't do that anymore. Yeah. And if there's an issue, we won't talk about it. Unless I'm f tangibly feeling love towards Jenny, yeah. I won't talk about an issue. Yeah. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm saying that that's what we do. Yeah. And I'm finding that when two people like Gina was pointing out, which is key, is like when you're coming from a higher state of mind, um, 
if an issue's here and your state of mind's there, there's not a lot you can do. If your issue's here and your state of mind is here, you know, you can see, you can see what, what's going on, you can come up with resolutions to that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would honestly say, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but if we hadn't come across this, we probably wouldn't be together now. <laughs> would you say Well, a lot of people do say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know for me in, in my uh, in my business relationships, I used to always assume that my effectiveness was highly dependent upon the attitude of my clients. You know, and, and unfortunately, when you're in the service business, the most difficult clients are the ones that are the most lucrative to serve because <laughs> they're always needing things. And so it seemed like a catch-22. It seemed like there was no way to be happy in that business. And it, like you say, when I took responsibility, so it's not them, so yeah. they can be in a bad mood, it has nothing to do with me. That's their thinking, they're just saying their thoughts. So they could say the most outrageous things to me and I'd be like, okay. You know, it, does, it, it stopped hitting me and, and frightening me when people would get upset or when they were caught up in their own thinking. Because two things, one is I realized it would pass for them as it does for everyone, and that it really wasn't personal. You know, and I can, I have been in the, in the presence of people that just ranted, you know, and I just, you know, I, I listen and okay. And then it, as you listen to somebody, they start hearing themselves. My experience always was that when somebody's really yelling at you and they're outraged and upset, if you trigger it, you know, if you just get into it with them, then that, you know, then they're right about being upset because now you're upset. See, yeah. <laughs> but, but if you're not, but not disrespectful in any way, just knowing that, you know, poor, poor soul, they're caught up in their thinking right now, but it'll pass. Mm. And you're listening to them, they start to, it's almost like they're looking in a mirror. And, the, and I've had clients, you know, take a deep breath and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe what I just did. I'm so sorry. And I haven't said a word yet. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think that that's, a, that's another thing. If more people understood that, we'd have less elevation of unpleasantness because unpleasantness is a transitory thought like all other thoughts. But, you know, if you feed it, it sticks around. I always tell people there's like feeding cats, you know, you can count on the fact you just keep feeding them and they'll keep coming back. Yeah, because so. the thing about stress is we, we rightly and innocently assume that stress is coming from our external situations, our, yeah. you know, it's people giving it to us or the situation. Yeah. But if, if it was the outside creating our stress all the time, then every situation you're in, everyone will feel the same. Like you have a traffic jam and you're yeah. going to get four different interpretations of their right. stress levels on that same traffic jam, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what Jenny was talking about, and Jean is talking about really, that when you can see that the stress you're creating is within yourself, you're creating it by the power of, by the principle of thought yourself, and it's innocent, and we all do it, I do it, everybody does it, it's the right. human thing to do, to create stress from events out there. But when you have a great appreciation to the system behind how you're creating it, mm -hmm. that in itself, allows you to be less stressed because you kind of catch yourself doing it and then you don't you know if, if you have this stress thought and it gets this big you kind of catch it here so it yeah. doesn't get that big in the first place right yeah so Gina when you uh, when you got involved in the work and started changing did did you have colleagues that were like what happened to Gina or you know, or were people asking you, can you share mm. more with me or help me more or help me to see what you see? Well, I was really off by myself, so there weren't, oh, you know, a salesperson. Yeah, I was off living in motels in towns <laughs> where I knew nobody. Yeah. So it, I didn't have that opportunity. Yeah. And the people that I saw when I was home were the people who, you know, my family was involved as in well. work as well, so. yeah. Oh. So you didn't have that. How about you guys? Did I think um, for me, everyone around me was was kind of shocked and wondered what had happened to me because yeah. pre learning about this, I took the world so personally and I'd be upset at the slightest thing. Yeah. And then just suddenly it was kind of like I think the saying water water off a duck's back yeah. because I was just kind of. I was just in life and I could just see that other people were doing the best they could and they were in a low mood that had nothing to do with me and yeah. 
I think everyone was worried for a time that maybe you know they, they didn't know what happened to me. And it seemed <laughs> strange that people were worried that I was so well. Yes. Um, but then after a time, everyone else kind of around me started to get involved um, in the same work. And I think it's, you know, I've, I've got my, my dad's involved, my sister, my auntie, um, my, a lot of our close friends have been involved. And it's just, I think when people see the change uh -huh. in, in someone that they love or, or, or a friend, it kind of inspires them to look in that direction as well. And it's been, you know, within the UK, it's, it's quite a small place. It's, it's taking off, it's kind of spreading because, you know, you share with one person, they share with another, they share it with their family, and it kind of goes out like that. Yeah. And I think in our community, it's kind of spreading. Yes. <laughs> Did, now, you were this pursuer of uh, techniques and ways to improve your mind. Did, did your uh, old friends say, Rudy, what's going with well, you? Well, I think the biggest thing is a member of your family. Yes. And I know that my brother, um, bless him, <laughs> he, he was, it's always like a new thing. Oh, my brother's called Dietmar. Dietmar, this is the way, you know, if you yeah. do this, life's going to be brilliant. And he saw me doing all these things and kind of getting so far with it. I mean, I have to say they all helped to, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, but when I came across this for the first time, I didn't preach it. I didn't talk about it. I'd, if people ask me, I'll, I'll talk about it. But then when they didn't ask, I'll, I just wouldn't push this on anybody at all. Yeah. And then I think because of my lack of non-commitment, me not talking about it, but I was acting it more. Yes. Like my brother could see I was being it rather than talking about it. Uh -huh. That he got really curious and he actually came on one of our courses fairly recently. My brother came on like my course. Wow. Which is to me is just amazing because he wouldn't seem dead on one of my courses. <laughs> because I because I was a huge hypocrite and didn't really practice what I was talking about. And you know, he didn't want to he didn't want to go to a course yeah. where I was saying things I wasn't being but I think with this is it's all very well to talk about the principles, but what I've really noticed and, and myself included to a degree is that it's like a being, you, you kind of become it, you, you mm -hmm. act it, you're, you know, you act with more understanding and kindness towards other people, you're more easily forgiving, you've got less on your mind. And yeah. the more I've come across this, the less I need to talk about it. Obviously I am now because yeah. of kind of, you know, with the cameras. Because I'm insisting. But, yeah. <laughs> But given the choice, generally, we're just kind of in life, really, and we're yeah. just enjoying whatever's happening, and we don't yeah. really talk about it, yeah. unless someone's interested. So yeah. I think, so, yeah, so seeing my, my brother come on one of my courses and be open to it was a testament to me, I guess. You know, when I first yeah. uh, started to really change quite a bit, it was interesting because I was working with a lot of uh, medical people, and this is something I, I made a complete fool of myself, and it was really funny. I've thought about this for years, but in psychiatry, there was a term called flight into health, which apparently is not a good thing, but it sounded so lovely to me. You know, flight into, oh, how beautiful. People just sort of set themselves free and fly into health. And, and uh, so I was at a meeting, and there were several psychiatrists in the room, and uh, and, and I apparently was expressing a high level of optimism about something and was kind of right. trying to conduct this business meeting in a different tone than usual. And, and one of them said to the other one, flight into health. And I heard it. And I stopped and I said, yes. <coughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were talking about it for years, you know. And it turns out that that was, like you say, they would worry about people that suddenly became way too happy and uh, optimistic and high-spirited after being down for a long time because they would assume it was some, you know, temporary craziness. So, you know, I, I see some of those same people now, years and years later, after having traveled far and wide and come back home, and they're like, uh, <laughs> you're still flying around up there, you know? <laughs> So, so tell me about some of the people that you encounter in the chamber, Gina, and how that's affecting in various chambers, and how that's uh, how that's starting to touch their their work and their life. Well, I had a, a very nice experience the other day. It, it, this wasn't particularly a chamber, but it was a networking group, and uh -huh. they had asked me to speak. And we were talking about, as Jenny was saying, that it seemed like circumstances control how we feel. Uh -huh. and, and I was talking to them about that and how really all of that is coming from the inside. And there was such a nice, calm feeling afterwards, and people came up and talked and said, you know, it's just 
so refreshing to look at life that way. Mm. Yeah. And the thing is that until it occurs to you to look at it, the whole world buys into this idea that circumstances control us. Yes. And until you're willing to say, wait a second, what if they don't? Yeah. You know, and, and I always say to people, you don't have to agree with me, but just get to what if. Meet me at what if. Yeah. I like that. Meet me at what if. Yeah. 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 Because I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything, but if you're not willing to look at the possibility, you can't see it. If yeah. you're sure it's not true, yeah. then you're not even looking with your eyes open. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. I like that. Well, it's looking like it's time it, for us to wind down now. And so as we wind down the show, uh, it's been wonderful talking to the three of you. I wonder if you'd like uh, to make a final comment, kind of a summary comment. Uh, starting with Rudy. Um, well, that's a big one. I guess for me is like we have no idea how powerful we are. Yeah. We have no, human life have no idea what the potential we have, and that potential is truly inspiring. And I'm, I feel totally blessed to have yeah. just kind of tuned into it a bit. Yeah, Jenny. I think <clears throat> just echoing what Rudy said, really. Um, I feel so grateful to be part of this community and you know, to be able to share this with, with the world through the website. I think it really is, um, it's just hopeful for, for, any, for anyone, mm -hmm. for humanity. Um, so yeah, just anyone yeah. watching, I just hope that this is you know, showing them that there is, there is, a, um, there is a, another way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gina? Yeah, I guess what I'd, I'd say is consider that what if. Yeah. You know, that if somebody is watching this and they're struggling in any way and it might feel like foolish or, or too much to ask to feel well, yeah. what if things aren't always going to feel this bad? Yeah. If you just get to the what if, it opens the door because that, that shift that happens inside is natural. It, it doesn't need you to do anything. Yeah. You just have to be open to that it, it can happen. Yeah. That's how I would wind up, is to say, no matter what, we all have innate health inside and never give up on yourself and never give up on anyone else because you never know. Everybody has it within them to find peace of mind. So with that, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time on the next edition of Innate Health.